So cranial nerves. Cranial nerves are, as we said, highways. There are sometimes these haphazard collections of, of axons. Um, the cranial nerve nuclei are not haphazard at all. They serve specific functions. And they serve those functions regardless of what nerves they are associated with. Now, some of the cranial nerve nuclei to cranial nerve associations are totally simple. Let's, let's give a couple examples of that. So, trochlear nucleus. The trochlear nucleus is a motor nucleus that contains the motor neurons that give rise to the trochlear cranial nerve. So trochlear nucleus, trochlear nerve, one-to-one -one association. There's nothing else in the trochlear nerve besides the axons that come from the trochlear nucleus. Trochlear nucleus gives rise to the trochlear nerve. Same thing with abducens. Abducens produces all the, uh, ha has the motor neurons that give rise to all the axons that are in the, in the abducens nerve. So one-to-one -one association, all is simple. Let's just check those off because those are really simple. We have one, one more really simple one, and that's the hypoglossal nucleus. The hypoglossal nucleus, once again, all it's got are motor neurons that are going to give rise to axons that are going to travel through the hypoglossal nerve. And there is nothing in the hypoglossal nerve except for those axons from the hypoglossal nucleus. So three delightfully simple nuclei to, to nerve um, associations. Now let's go to a slightly more complicated one. This is the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve three. It, it has axons coming from two different nuclei. One is ocular motor. This has the motor neurons that innervate four extraocular muscles plus the levator palpebrae. So motor axons innervating five different muscles travel through the cranial nerve. The other thing in the ocular motor nerve are parasympathetic fibers that are going to both the pupil and the lens. And those don't arise from the ocular motor nucleus because the ocular motor nucleus is a motor, a, a, a somatic motor uh, nucleus. They arise from Edinger-Westphal, which is an autonomic motor nucleus. So Edinger-Westphal is giving rise to the parasympathetic fibers that travel in uh, in the ocular motor uh, nerve, cranial nerve three. Now these are very close to each other and so the fibers come out from the two different sources, join together and travel out of the, out of the uh, midbrain in this case. So uh, we're, we're done with that. It's, it, that was not so bad, right? So now we have, um, a, a, let's go through another not so bad one. The, the, the vestibular cochlear nucleus has two components. It has the part that's coming from the cochlea and the part which is um, the spiral ganglion. Spiral ganglion, uh, these are peripheral neurons, peripheral afferents that are bringing information in about hearing. So this is, this is spiral ganglion cells, and then there are what's called the scarpa's ganglion, which is bringing information in from the vestibulum. And so these two um, are going to travel in through the uh, eighth cranial nerve. There are two cochlear nuclei. There are four vestibular nuclei. There, so this is a dorsal and a ventral cochlear nucleus. In the vestibular system, it's the medial, lateral, superior, and so on. So, so there, we are not going to concern ourselves with the different um, uh, nuclei. We, we simply want to know that this information is coming into cochlear nuclei, this information is coming into vestibular nuclei. So again, not so bad. Now let's talk about the facial nucleus. So the facial nucleus is a pretty simple place. It has the branchial motor neurons that go to two places, muscles of facial expression. And the other thing is that it goes to uh, stapedius. Stapedius is one of the middle ear muscles. The axons from the facial nucleus innervate a series of branchial motor muscles. Um, the, the muscles of facial expression and the stapedius in the middle ear. 
and all of them travel through the facial nerve. But it is not the case that these are the only fibers that travel through the facial nerve. So the other fibers that travel through the facial nerve are um, uh, axons involved in taste, axons involved in somatic sensation, axons involved in uh, parasympathetic outflow. And, and so those come from other places. So this is not a one-to-one -one relationship. Even though this is called the facial nucleus, it only gives rise to the branchial motor component of the facial nerve. Is that clear? That is very, that's a very important concept to understand. Okay, so, so this, is a, this is a work in progress. There are other axons that have to join with these axons to form this nerve. So other um, axons uh, are involved, uh, I'm sorry, other cranial nerve nuclei are ones involved in sensing viscera. The viscero sensation is the nucleus of solitary tract. Ambiguous is a, um, is a region that gives rise to uh, control of the upper airways. And dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus gives rise to parasympathetic outflow to the rest, to, to the body. Um, not listed here are, are the uh, parasympathetic uh, nuclei that give rise to salivation and lacrimation and that type of thing. So it's complicated because a, a nerve such as 10 is, is associated with uh, several different cranial nerve nuclei. The, 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 mo the most difficult one to understand is not 10, it's actually trigeminal. And that's where we're gonna, we're gonna end up with that. So the trigeminal nerve, there are, there are two major components to the trigeminal nerve. One is sensory and one is motor. But as it turns out, the sensory part of the trigeminal nerve is associated with two, at least two different uh, sensory nuclei, cranial nerve nuclei. One, the spinal trigeminal nucleus, which deals primarily with pain and temperature, and the other, the main sensory nucleus, which deals primarily with light touch uh, vibration proprioception. In general, as in, in uh, clinical neurology, we're gonna worry way more about the spi spinal trigeminal nucleus than, than any, any other trigeminal associated nucleus. Um, and finally, there's this motor trigeminal nucleus that gives rise to the axons that innervate the chewing muscles, but also a, um, a, a muscle called the tensor tympani. Uh, we'll come back to that when we talk for a moment about the trigeminal nerve. So what's important here is the spinal trigeminal nucleus is... It is, it's, a, it's a very important nucleus, it's a big nucleus, it's a long nucleus, it covers a lot of the hindbrain, but it is associated not just with the trigeminal nerve. It gets input from facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus. Why? Because for whatever, through whatever twist of fate, facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus all carry pieces, uh, information from pieces of the ear. All right, so they all converge onto the spinal trigeminal nucleus. The point being, this is a very, conceptually, you need to understand that the cranial nerve nuclei serve functions. The cranial nerves are simply haphazard, in some cases, collections of axons. In some cases they make sense, but in, it, frequently it is a haphazard uh, collection. And so there is not necessarily a one-to-one -one correspondence, or, or there is infrequently a one-to-one -one correspondence between a cranial nerve nucleus and a cranial nerve. Great. So now we're just simply going to go through uh, the cranial nerves and, uh, and look at their function.